I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Not only was it an iconic moment in our history, it was a bold vision which appealed to the better angels of our nature. As many of you will recall, MLK was most passionate about his children one day being judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. Holy shit did we piss on that dream, as if the man was delusional for even considering such a proposition. Race is all that matters. I hate to admit it, but racism is not going anywhere anytime soon. We need it, want it, and refuse to do without it. Now for some of you, this may seem like a wild claim to make, but I am going to break down exactly why I have come to this conclusion. So stick with me and try to keep up. One in a million, a million, the one villain, too hot to be in the kitchen, I'll end up melting the ceiling. There are three major reasons why racism in America will not be going anywhere anytime soon. One must only take a few moments on social media to get a dose of American racism in all of its glory. Sadly, most of the racism you will see will be coming from the most unlikely places. The very same people who claim to be victims of racism are usually the people being the most racist. White liberals and black liberals need racism to thrive in America. At the very least, they need the perception of racism to be forever present in order for them to fight the good fight. On the other hand, there are more than enough white and black conservatives who jump at every opportunity to point out the bad behavior of black people in order to hold them accountable for their choices. While both sides may claim they are doing just what is necessary to bring attention to the real problems we are facing with racism, both sides are profiting from it enormously. So let's break down one of the first reasons we find ourselves in this situation. Racism is a great excuse. Since I was a kid, there have been countless teachers, doctors, lawyers, judges, and community leaders reminding me of the injustices of slavery and racism. They made sure to remind me that the mean, mad white man was out there lurking in the shadows, waiting to keep me down. The only problem with their warning was the fact that I couldn't see it. Most of my childhood was played with gang violence, drug use, criminal activity, and gambling. Every single person who I saw destroying my community was someone who had my skin color. Now, here is where the academic comes in. They do well to remind you that these people are only in this situation due to past racial injustices and economic immobility. Well, I often wonder what their excuse was for all the people in my neighborhood who didn't commit crimes, use or sell drugs, gamble, or commit violence. If the past was a valid excuse for why people made terrible choices, shouldn't the past also apply to those who made great choices? If they all shared a common history, what are the factors that determine the different outcomes? One might be tempted to think that these people have not done enough thinking as they would like you to believe. For example, we have known for some time now that having a father in the home drastically increases your chances of future success like graduating high school, going to college, and not going to jail. Things as simple as reading to your child can have a major impact on their development. Meanwhile, single motherhood rates have risen constantly in the past decades. I am willing to argue that this fact has more of an impact on black children in the 21st century than slavery, Jim Crow, and redlining. Yet. How often does a social justice warrior remind you of the devastating impacts of black children being raised by a single mother? If the past does have an impact on today, how much of it is due to that? And how much to personal decision making? 20%? 30%? No one seems to know. Yet, the past is offered up as if they have done the statistical analysis and have come to a unanimous conclusion. Yet, many of us couldn't even tell you the name of the last slave in our family. We will instantly claim victimhood by association because our skin color happens to be black. When one doesn't achieve the status that they would like in life, it is much easier to blame someone else for their shortcomings. 
Racism is the perfect invisible monster that allows you to avoid responsibility. Take religion for example. Satan is blamed for all the evil done in the world. He tempts you, seeks your suffering, and hides in the shadows where he can pull the strings. He is invisible and only seen by those who know how his works are done. Constructs like these offer the perfect scapegoat for those looking to explain why things are the way they are, while still allowing the person to keep their innocence. While many black people find this tactic to be repulsive and not worth using, there are plenty of those who do. Why give up the perfect crutch? This is in no way saying that the past does not have an impact on today. There must obviously be people impacted by decisions made long ago. It is the surety and conviction of what is and isn't, which I find to be indefensible. To wrap up this point, I will use myself as an example. When I was younger, I committed horrible crimes for personal gain. Yes, I was poor. Yes, I lived in a bad neighborhood. And yes, I was surrounded by bad influences. But here's where things get tricky. I knew all of those things while I was doing my crimes. I had food in my fridge. We had cars, a roof over our head, free education, and plenty of groups that would come to our neighborhood and bring us resources. I was smart enough to know that I didn't have to do those things. But I enjoyed the competition the danger, and the status game. I went out of my way to do those things because I wanted to be a gangster. I had a father and mother who had warned me of the consequences, showed me other ways of living and what was possible. I would only have to do the right thing. I don't know how many of my ancestors were slaves or slave owners. I don't know if any of them were rich or white. What I do know is that I chose to be a bad person. I don't use my personal story as an example to be applied across the board, but how many kids out there are participating in criminal activity who know better and choose to do otherwise? How many of them are being rounded up in the statistics and labeled victims of oppression? Where are the study groups that go out and find out the motivations and individual circumstances that have nothing to do with poverty or the history of racism? What incentive would one have to even be honest about it? Given the option, wouldn't you prefer people saw you as a victim instead of someone who chose to be a criminal? There must truly be cases like this all throughout America, yet we will never be able to account for them. Still, society will ask that we pretend as if this is just not possible. So yes, racism is a great excuse one that will never voluntarily be given up unless we find incentives for people to do so. The second reason is that racism is power. Think about all of the civil rights groups, thought leaders, law firms, and individuals who get paid to tell Americans about their racism. The money keeps pouring in, and it really just keeps pouring in. There is no limit to the amount of people who will use racism as a way to gain influence and achieve prestige. How many books have been written on the subject? How many people have built their careers fighting it and claiming to be champions of the oppressed? What about those who get paid to tell you that racism is not a problem and that black people just need to do better? These are the same people who have teams of others scouring the internet to find black people behaving in horrible ways. They have entire videos dedicated to telling white people they are not the problem. I am not saying that any side is right or wrong at times, only that racism can be very profitable for those fighting it and for those claiming it is not a problem. Take your elite liberals like ta Coates, Cornel West, and Al Sharpton. These leaders have made great careers speaking on behalf of the black community and never missing the chance to point out the white man's flaws. After decades of fighting for civil rights, we somehow still find ourselves fighting the same fight. Meanwhile, they have job security. Do you really think that if we solve racism that these guys will pack up and go home? Of course they wouldn't. This is where the bread gets buttered. They have every reason to find something to be upset about so they can keep their relevance. Why would anyone want to see their profession destroyed? No matter how far we come as a society, there is no shortage of thought leaders to remind us of how racist America is and why they are the voice to speak truth to power. With that clout, they can continue to get speaking engagements, book deals, 
and opportunities. One must only take a look at the Black Lives Matter organization to see what truly resides behind the curtain. Here we have a group of people who job it was to advocate on behalf of black people, yet they quickly line their pockets, enrich their families, and empower their political allies. Fast forward, the black community is in the same position as it was before the organization was formed. I should point out that the black community is not a community which exists in the first place. Black people make up various cultures, ideas, needs, and wants. A black man living in New York has different concerns, ideologies, and experiences than a black man living in Georgia. One can live in the same city and still be vastly different from another black person who lives a few minutes away. Still, we must pretend as if all of these people are one and the same and require black leaders to speak on their behalf. Then we have the black conservatives like Larry Elder, Candace Owens, and Thomas Sowell. Now I must admit of being a fan of Thomas Sowell and his work, but I have to be objective in my analysis. These black people have benefited from racism as well. As a content creator, I have a small glimpse of the temptation to make content about black people and racism in America. Hence, we find ourselves with this video. It is just something amazing to see black people who have decided to go against the mainstream narrative and fight back. Not only is it profitable, but it also comes with its own incentives like fame, book deals, and influence. The job of these black conservatives is to show white people that we are not all the same and that racism is not the problem, while also appealing to those black people who find themselves outside of the liberal bubble. In order for this to work, they must point out all the issues within the black community and highlight why they are the problem, not white people or racism. This can be a very consoling thing to white people to find themselves being accused of having white privilege and benefactors of race. It also appeals to races who need validation that black people are the problem. Now, it is true that some of these conservatives and liberals are well-intentioned. After all, someone has to wrestle with race in America, but we must not pretend that they are not highly motivated by the rewards of taking such a path. I fear that many of them know the damage that could come to their personal brand if we were to ever find a solution to racism. If that is the case, we must challenge their motivations. I myself wrestle with the desire to help our country without causing further harm by trying to do so. If we are supposed to be thriving towards a racial free society, does it really help that we have so many leaders whose sole job it is to focus more on race? We find ourselves in a stalemate of ideas. If one side is to give up the battle, they must be sure that the other side will as well. They feed off of each other. While we are divided on the issue, dollars continue to pour in and they continue to feed the beast. This is why I believe America needs racism. If it were to go away, so many people will be out of a job and the power they once had will be diminished. The third and final reason that racism is not going anywhere is simple. Americans are more divided than ever. Capitalism benefits from having groups divided. Race is just one category in which they can carve up the market and continue to cater to like-minded people. The government also has a role to play in this squabble. If we were constantly fighting amongst ourselves, we would never be able to see the things we have in common and work together. While we are fighting culture wars, decisions about government, war, the economy, and so much more are being made on our behalf. We don't have the time to keep up with it because we're on social media defending our positions. In a way, we like racism. For black people, it allows us to get back at the white man as we enjoy double standards that give us the moral justification. It causes white people to get in on the fight as either a social justice warrior or a defender of America's history. We have come up with our own virtue signals, groups, and identities which give us a sense of community. This is when corporations come in to tailor their products to these groups and reinforce their dogmas. We no longer see ourselves as Americans, but different teams of America. It is either lock her up or lock him up. Given our advancement in technology, people have been more isolated than ever before. We long to be social and find others who understand our personal grievances. Some would argue that things can be going so well that we must manufacture problems from thin air in order to entertain ourselves. If we are doing better than all those who came before us, yet still find that we are more unhappy, 
then do we really want to give up the things which give us purpose? Without a common enemy, we turn on ourselves and destroy America from the inside. Racism is just a low-hanging fruit which we can all grab onto and use as a political football. It took me a while to decide if I would make this video. As with many things, it is controversial, complicated, and dangerous. It will take countless videos to cover this subject in its entirety, while still knowing it would not sit well with many viewers. Still, it needed to be said. I have hope that we will someday find a way out of this racism dilemma. I have met too many good people from all walks of life who have been afraid to weigh in, but we are the majority. I encourage you to do your part by staying informed, aware of the tactics, and outspoken when you see something wrong. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. Be sure to subscribe and smash that like button. It lets me know that you enjoy these videos and that they're worth making. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comment section. That way, I know you're not a racist. Till next time, Hobby Lobby, peace and glory. Be peaceful and be great. This is a certified hood classic.